Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section, and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to describe the function and structure of the leaf. Locate three tissue types, dermal, ground and vascular, in a transverse section of a leaf. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? Well, it's fairly straightforward. You have to be able to describe the function and structure of the leaf and be able to identify three tissue types, dermal, ground and vascular, in a transverse section or a cross section of a leaf. Let's go. Let's try to understand the organisation of the parts of the flowering plant by looking at leaves. What are the functions of leaves? The first function of a leaf is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the way that green plants use light, look at photo, to make food, synthesis to make. Don't forget oxygen out. So when photosynthesis is carried out, the leaves give out oxygen. They take in carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide in, oxygen out. This is gas exchange, the second function of leaves. The third function of leaves is transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water vapour from the surface of a plant. Another function of leaves is that they sometimes store food. We find this in lettuce leaves and cabbage leaves and that is why they are a source of food for us. Finally, the last function of leaves here is that they carry out vegetative reproduction or asexual reproduction. An example of leaves carrying out vegetative reproduction is in the plant called mother of thousands. In this plant there are numerous little plantlets, tiny little plants, along the edges of the leaves. When these little plantlets fall off the parent plant, these then have the potential to grow into new plants, hence we have vegetative reproduction or asexual reproduction, which we will learn about later. Types of leaves. The first type of leaf is a simple leaf. Simple leaves consist of a single leaf. They can have parallel veination where the veins run parallel to each other or straight in straight lines. Parallel veination is usually found in what we call monocot plants. So grasses have parallel veination, grasses are monocot plants. The other type of simple leaf has reticulate or netted venation. The veins are like a net. This type of venation is usually found in dicot plants like beech leaves belonging to the beech tree. Compound leaves are made up of leaflets, several smaller little leaves, but the entire structure of the ash leaf consists of all the leaves, the leaflets really, that we can see here. Another plant that has a compound leaf is the horse chestnut tree. Again, the leaf is made up of leaflets and the entire leaf belonging to the horse chestnut tree is the entire structure. The external structure of a leaf. The main part of a leaf is the main vein or mid rib, which is the biggest vein. The function of the main vein is to support the leaf and hold it. It also contains xylem and phloem, which is vascular tissue. So the function of the main vein is to transport water and food. The second part of the leaf is the lamina or blade. 
a flat surface. The lamina is very thin. The function of the lamina or the blade of the leaf is to carry out photosynthesis and make food for the plant. There are also side veins. Side veins are smaller than the main vein. Side veins support the leaf as well. Side veins have vascular tissue, xylem and phloem. Therefore, side veins also transport water and food. Finally, there is the petiole or the stalk. Now, we need to be very careful here. Quite a lot of people call this the stem of the leaf. It is not a stem. The plant stem is an entirely different structure. The petiole is the stalk of the leaf. The function of the petiole or the stalk is to attach the leaf to the stem. Finally, the base of the leaf is where the leaf is actually attached. This generally will leave a mark on the stem of the plant when the leaf falls. Lastly, let's look at a transverse section of a leaf. This is a very important structure. We are going to meet this in several places on the course, so it is well worth our while to learn how to draw this. Now, the transverse section that we are drawing is that we're cutting across a leaf and we're looking at the structure which is only as thick as a sheet of paper. Now the top surface of the leaf is usually made of a waxy layer. It's called a cuticle. It's a non-cellular layer. It doesn't have any cells. It is made of wax. Its function is to prevent the loss of water. Apples generally are covered in a layer of wax. This makes them shiny and attractive, but it also prevents the loss of water, keeping the apples fresh for a longer period of time. Now don't forget, the leaf is an organ. So if the leaf is an organ, we would anticipate seeing tissues. The first tissue that we see is dermal tissue, quite often called the upper epidermis. The function of the dermal tissue is protection. It protects the leaf from attack by microorganisms or pathogens. Dermal tissue does not contain any chlorophyll. The next type of tissue is ground tissue. Remember, ground tissue can be used for storing food or if it's green, it can carry out photosynthesis. Here, the ground tissue contains a lot of chloroplasts which contain chlorophyll, therefore the ground tissue is going to carry out photosynthesis. In this case there are two types of ground tissue. The first type of ground tissue is the palisade cells. The palisade cells form the upper layer of the ground tissue, the layer that's nearest the sun. Therefore the palisade cells are tightly packed. P for packing, P for palisade, P for photosynthesis. They remind me of suitcases, all packed very closely, one beside the other. They are also full of chloroplasts. The idea being to maximize the chances of capturing sunlight in order to carry out photosynthesis. The other type of ground tissue is the spongy mesophyll. What is characteristic of this type of ground tissue is that it consists of roundy cells with air spaces between them. These intercellular spaces, they're not cells, are vital for the passage or the movement of gases. The gases will travel in from the outside of the leaf in through the intercellular spaces, carbon dioxide in particular, that is needed for photosynthesis, and the carbon dioxide will make its way through the spaces up to the palisade layer where it is needed for photosynthesis, as we have said. In return, the leaf will produce oxygen gas. 
The oxygen is going to travel from the palisade cells and from the spongy mesocells through the intercellular spaces and out the leaf. The next type of tissue is the lower epidermis or dermal tissue. Again, the function of this tissue is protection of the leaf. Now be very careful here. The guard cells control the stomatas or the opening out through which the gases will be exchanged. A lot of people tend to say that the guard cells guard the stomatas. That is not correct. The guard cells control the opening and closing of the stomatas and hence play a part in gas exchange. As a matter of interest, the guard cells are the only cells in the lower epidermis that contain chlorophyll. The stoma is the opening to the outside of the leaf. Stomata is plural. The function of the stoma is to allow gas exchange, to let gases in and out. Finally, in the transverse section or the cross section of a leaf, we will notice a vein. Now the vein contains vascular tissue or transport tissue. It contains xylem for carrying water and phloem for carrying food. Remember, O in phloem, O in food and O for outside because if we are looking at the cross section of a stem, the phloem tissue is found on the outside of the vascular bundle. Here, when we are drawing a vein, we've got to make sure that the xylem tissue is on the top and the phloem tissue is down in the bottom. The function of vascular tissue, as we have said, is to transport materials. The xylem will transport or carry water and minerals and the phloem will carry food. Finally, to finish up, you must be able to draw large, clear, well-labeled diagrams of these structures and know the functions of each part. Practice in a jotter. Now that we have reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you describe the function and structure of the leaf? Can you locate three tissue types, dermal, ground and vascular, in a transverse section of a leaf?